Hello Hard Video Audits of welcome back. Have you ever considered using a macro lens for videography? I picked up a Sigma 105 macro f2.8 and here's what I think about it. A macro lens may not be an obvious choice for your videography. It's kind of an obscure style of lens that people quite rightly associate with those super tight close-up shots. But of course, they can be extremely versatile lenses. The image being really interesting with great compression, larger than life bokeh, and amazing shallow depth of field. Believe it or not, I actually do a lot of macro product photography for my main business. And for years now, I've been using the 80 millimeter macro function in my Canon 24 70 f4 IS and it's been great up to this point but now I thought it's time to upgrade to a dedicated macro lens because I know how good they can look and so I looked at the Sigma 105. So what is it? Well it's a 105 millimeter prime lens with stabilization with a maximum aperture of f2.8 which lets you get really nice one-to-one -one macro images. It also doubles up as a really nice medium telephoto portrait lens. It has a 62mm filter thread and it comes with a chunky case. Next, I'm going to go through what I think are the negatives of this because I don't think any lens is perfect and this is a lens that has lots of niggles for me. So I'm going to get all the negatives out of the way and then I'll tell you what I like about it. Let's do it. Firstly, this lens is noisy. Man, it's noisy. Listen to this. Obviously, this is the floating element. I assume that's the OS. But it's not just that. I find when it's in operation, man, it whirs away like anything. It, particularly with the OS on, I know it's just doing its job, but man. Secondly, the focus ring. Not a fan myself, and it's partly because it's got such a short focus throw and it's also quite noisy slash gritty. Got that? Not a fan. It is particularly difficult when pulling focus just because it's very twitchy. You know, it could be maybe two millimeters and you're completely out of focus and it's just tricky, that's all. I know this lens isn't designed for videography, but yeah, not good. Thirdly, and it's to do with the optical stabilization. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate all forms of OS, IS, whatever you're gonna call it, in any lens. However, this one is just too unpredictable, too jerky. It's not smooth like some of the more modern lenses. And I get it, I understand why it's designed to freeze the action when you're taking photos. It's not designed for video, but still, I find it fairly unusable. Fourthly, and this is a problem that really only affects people that are using Sony bodies and adapting the lens, and this, uh, this may not happen to you, it happens to me, when I'm focused to infinity and I rack focus somewhere closer, the aperture blades twitch. I'll show you what I mean. Roll the clip. Thankfully, as soon as you hit record, it stops doing it, so it really could be worse. This is 100% just technology not talking to each other, and there's no reason it should. The lens isn't designed to be adapted to a Sony E-mount. We all know this. That's why it's happening. This problem doesn't happen on my 5D, so I know why, it's just annoying because it doesn't happen on any other lens that I've got. And fifth, this is kind of inevitable as well, but you will get crazy, and I mean crazy, focus breathing with this lens. And it's just because it has such a close focusing distance, and then obviously it will go to infinity, plus it's a longer lens. Um, I'll show you what I mean right now. And now the positives, and there are plenty. I love the image from this thing. It's lovely and sharp, you get great compression, and the outer focus areas are lovely. It's just enough to make you weak at the knees. Secondly, and I already mentioned this, but it is sharp, particularly when you stop down just a little bit from f2.8, somewhere around f4 to 5.6, that's when I really notice things sharpen up and it looks great. Thirdly is build quality, and I know I had a little whinge about the rattling floating element, which is just the image stabilization, but a lot of lenses have that, so I'm not putting that down to a build quality issue, it's just me being me. And otherwise, it's really made of quite nice plastic, not 
Sigma art quality, but otherwise it feels solid and it doesn't feel like it's going to break or anything, so uh, overall it's good. Fourthly is the design of the lens hood. It's great. Here does it even look like it's on, but it is. It's actually just really nicely kind of moulded to the body and then it just goes like that and it's superb. It clicks so solidly into place, it's not going to fall off like some lenses. Canon. So yes, hood design, excellent. And fifth, this is a stonking quality lens. Stonking. At somewhere around £350, probably about the same in dollars or euros. Check it out. Obviously, I will link the lens below, so check it out there. Um, I think it's a hell of a lot of lens for your money ridiculous value for money. At this stage I would say that whilst I really like the image from this lens, it, there are too many quirks for me to keep it, so I will be re unfortunately returning it, which makes me look at alternatives, and there are plenty. Canon, for example, do a non-L series f2.8 100mm non-stabilised, and they also do an L series 100mm f2.8 which is stabilised. Um, two possible options, both I think quite good value for money, relatively speaking. I would also like to throw into the mix Samyang and Rokinen's offering, uh, which looks pretty amazing. It's only manual focus, but it's meant to be super sharp, and again, it's f2.8, so um, I will list all of these below so you can check them at your leisure, um, but that's a really, really good possibility as well. And lastly, there's Tamron's new offering, well, new as of 2017, and it's their 90mm, and it's meant to be amazing. I've not had a chance to try it myself. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than the Sigma uh, 105. It looks great, it's meant to be super sharp, and the image is meant to be amazing from it. My only concern is that it's, it's only a 90mm, and really I'd like longer than that because my Canon 24 to 70 does an 80mm version of a macro, so yeah, not sure. And I also wonder whether Sigma at some point will revise this lens and bring out an, uh, a 105 Art series, which would be great, right? Uh, I'm sure way more expensive, but wouldn't that be nice? And so to my opinion, it's an optically good quality lens, which gives you interesting images but it has many, many quirks that stop me from recommending it for video use. So buy this lens if you only shoot photos and want a great value lens that gives you sharp, interesting macro and portrait images. Don't buy this lens if you shoot video. It's kind of obvious really, it's not a lens that was designed to be adapted to Sony E-mount, we know this, and it's not a lens that was designed to be used for video at all. The clunky noise, the twitchy aperture blades, the horrible focus ring, ah, it's frustrating. But it's been fun filming this for you guys, and I hope you found it helpful, informative, and interesting. And as always, it's been fun, and I'll uh, see you next time. See ya.